Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I am Norz again. Welcome. And I know it hasn't been long since my episode 2, but I just wanted to play. I wanted to play, and so here we are, because it's fun. Uh, I am back sort of to my old uh, setup here, where I've got uh, the, the PDF open. It's just easier to flip through. I can search for things. And I'm sure it's more interesting to see uh, what I'm using um, than, uh, than me looking at a book. So uh, going like this. So here we are. If you are, uh, if you like uh, what you see here, this, oh, my, <laughs> my vacuum cleaner is like talking to me. Um, one sec. All right. Uh, if you like what you see here uh, in terms of the tabletop, this is Shard. You can find a, um, a uh, link to it in the description of this video. I have no... God, my cat. I have no association with it. I'm not getting paid by them. They're not a sponsor. I just like their product. I just think it's the best VTT for Dungeons & Dragons and 5e. Um, and so I encourage you to check it out. Uh, let's see, what else? If you like what you see here, want to support me, you can see my coffee page at the bottom in the description. And I'll also include the solo, uh, let's go, what? why not? Weird. Uh, I'll also include uh, a link to the, the Solo Adventures Toolbox, which is the book I use for solo play with 5e, as well as the World Map of Midgard link, which is uh, a pretty comprehensive Midgard tool map that's not in the VTT, but it's still really handy. So if you if we go down to here, this is where we're at, is Kronopisht, Kron, Kronopisht, and here we go. Boom. There is... Uh, oh yeah, there we are. So last time, let's see, uh, click on here, check out my notes from last game. Um, session one, session two, uh, ch -ch -ch experience I got, boss goes back to town, blah, blah, blah. Arriving in Kronopisht, monster level appropriate, hard encounter, monster on loose, ma marauding through the streets. Right. So when Voss and Girsa, Girsa being the woman that she met the night before while camping by that abandoned town, which I marked here, uh, but I still don't know where, like what her, um, what it is, or what it's about. So we got, so they woke up and they went down to Kronopisht, and when they neared the gates, they saw that there was, uh, let's see here, there was, the gates were closed, and people from the stable outside, Kronopisht is known for its steeds, and um, among other things, and let's see, they came to the gates, and there was a nervous man there, a nervous guard, who said they they didn't want to go in there because there was a terrible monster rampaging through the <laughs> through the town, um, and so that means I need to figure out what is a uh, monster that would be relevant and appropriate. I think one of the things I need to do is develop like what is the nature of the monster. Um, so I think here would be the verb table. Um, let's see here. Wilderness generator. I don't know what, where the verb table is actually located. Loot table, monster encounters for soil play. What does the monster do? Story element. Oh, it's the story element, 104. So let's go to 104. So we're just, we're going to create this through this sort of sneaky thing. So, but we're just going to say it's creature. It's a creature. We know this. Okay. Um, and then it says roll in initially four times 
to try and generate the the seeds oh, and then the verb list um, I guess we already have an event so really I just need the verbs here they no where are they here they are so this is a lot you roll d10 to see which hundred selection you get to so maybe maybe I take three verbs and sort of construct the monster out of that and then see what we have so I'm gonna roll three oh shoot um, three tens, two seven seven, which means two is one, is it one through 99. So the first one's gonna be the one through 99. A 20, applaud, okay. And then the last two were seven, which means Three through ninety nine, three hundred through ninety nine. So I'm just gonna roll two of these now. Okay, hang on. I need to start a new session here. Uh, title of the adventure: uh, A city in need. Session three: Location: Kronepisht. Uh, DM value: I'm not sure. And monster prompts. We'll go uh, applauded or applauded. Applauded. Uh, and then we got 96 and 35. So that's 396 and 335. 396. Rebel. Rebel, I mean, or rebel, uh, rebel, and 35 would be here. Mesmerize. Ooh, these are some crazy mesmerize. I spelled that wrong. M memorize. No, no, no. Wait, maybe that was what I, I should have said. Mesmerize. Yeah, okay. Mesmerize, not memorize. Okay, mesmerize. Okay, let's take a look at the monster loot here, or the monsters for solo play. So, generate, no, no, we don't need that. Oh, this is for two PCs, level two, and it said, in our last, it said, monster level appropriate hard encounter. All right, let's take a look at the hard, level two hard encounters. Uh, okay, so I roll a d6, and I go either a one, oh, a CR 18 plus one times, times CR zero monsters. 1 CR 1 8th plus 1 CR 0. Okay. Oh, I see. This is like a pretty bizarre um, way of doing it. 3 CR 0. Okay, so a D6. I need a D6. That's, that's what I need to do. And then we'll go from there. 5. So 3 CR 0 monsters. Mm. Mm. That might not be cool enough. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the creature book real quick. Uh, oh, Tome of Heroes. No, that's not what I want. Oh, no. Oh. There we go. Monster Vault. Oh, I think I already had it there. Uh, yeah, here we go. Monster Vault. Do they have it on uh, SCRs? I don't think they do. Understanding to type using this book. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Um. All right. I I think I got it. This is cool. So um, I'm gonna say. Uh, 
picked monster. It's an umbral, umbral shambler. Um, which is a CR2 creature, obviously. That's way harder than something I could fight by myself. But luckily, we've got Gearsa here to help. Um, so I found this cool map. I scribbled out the name because it's not, it's Kronopish. And I think this works pretty well. Like, it's got the river here and, you know, like a thing going across. And it's cute. I like this hill on the top. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> There's, um, yeah, uh, farmland on this other side. Pretty sweet. Uh, and it gets a little grainy when I zoom in, but it's all right. All right, so... Um, this, this young man, um, this guard says they can't go in because there's this monster that's been terrorizing the town. Let's see here. Add monster. Uh, umbral spec. Oh, yeah. Umbral shambler. Add. There it is. Uh, let's show it. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So I think it needed to be a demon. I really thought that was, like, the right call, to tell you the truth. I think... Let's just put some music on. Um, mm. Let's see, there we go, um, because, let's go down, oh, log, um, turn me on, pain the town, NPC, oh yeah, this is Gearsa, it says she's a level 18, but we're going to pretend I didn't roll that. Unjust killing way. Oh yeah, right. Waylay hijack. Oh yeah, I got this quest from Gearsa because she is trying to. She's been summoned by someone, but we don't know whom, to go to this town and waylay or hijack or stop someone who's transporting illegal materials on the river. So we'll get to that later. First things first. There's this shambler. Uh, applauded, rebel, and mesmerize. Okay, so how does that fit in? I'm not quite sure yet. The uh, guard, let's see. Okay, I've been doing this thing where I think I need to do a better job of describing things. So if the walls, uh, I want to practice this for my own like games that I DM. So like the walls uh, are made of stone, block stone, sandy block stone fitted in place. There's mortar in between each. Um, the towers are uh, tall with uh, and circular. There's typically archers in the top in, in them, as you can see here and here, right? Um, the, the gates are wood. And the small uh, stable here it has horses in it, but only one guard because the others have gone to try to uh, deal with the Umbral Shambler. And the guard is, uh, ooh, okay. And this is another thing. S so that's sight, right? So now smell. What's the smell of the city? Um, maybe fire? There is uh, smoke in the air, like the h a hint of smoke. It's not uh, prevalent, but it's certainly a thing. There are um, <laughs> there are people burning, uh, you know, wood fire uh, stoves, and, but maybe there's something a little something else on the wind because the umbral shambler has started fires and there's like. Uh, things going on that, with that, maybe sort of trying to destroy the town. 
Now, the Umbral Shambler isn't a big creature. It's a pretty normal, like, humanoid uh, entity. Um, oh, it has sunlight sensitivity. Hmm, interesting. So, maybe... I'm going to say, okay, so I already think I know what has happened here because I rolled the dice and got, um, let's see here, and got the applauded rebel, rebel mesmerize. Um, is perhaps a situation where somebody summoned this thing? And was, ooh, oh my gosh. It's all just coming into my brain like all at once. Sorry. Uh, okay, okay. There, there's unrest in this city. Um, because of the illegal activity, it all fits together. It's crazy. Okay, because of the illegal activity that Girsa is there to deal with, there's like a war between um, the soldiers of the city and the, the underground. And they have sort of rebelled. The underground has rebelled. Um, and they summoned... <laughs> they have a leader who is very applauded and held up as a figure of um of sort of like like he's a he's a populist and he has sort of gotten people to to buy into his way of doing things and now there's this upheaval and there's been skirmishes between the different factions innocent people are getting caught in between uh in this power struggle and eventually these rebels have summoned this demon i think that sh the shambler is a demon or at least at the very least it's a fiend um yeah medium oh aberration natural evil neutral evil excuse me um so yeah I think that is what's happening. The man at the stable goes, no, you, you can't go in. The, and then, let's see here, uh, Kronopisht. Do I have that? Yeah, I do. Uh, who are Queen Dorita, Core Cricket, Kings Road, Zobek, Field of Cores. Where was the name of the, uh, hmm, there's lots of names here, but I'm not seeing the names of the soldiers. It's like a really important s soldier or something like, hmm, cities and towns of Magdar, white riders, oh, Undying Sun, come and commandary of the undying sun is who these people have uh rebelled against oh did i put this in the journal i didn't that was silly here let's go undying sun order of the undying sun yeah this is them so at journal perfect there we go now i have that right here okay he goes, uh, the Order of the Undying Sun is trying to put down a rebellion. They, they've completely lost it. They, they summoned some, I don't know, created some creature, some monster. Um, I'm going to ask a question here. Uh, did, since this thing has sunlight sensitivity, I feel like those who summoned it would have known that. And so maybe they put like a darkness, a magical darkness over the city. And I'm going to say it's, it's likely. Let's go to, here we go. It's likely. So I'm going to give it a plus two. And roll 
a d20. So a 10. I think a 10's outcome is maybe. Okay, maybe. Question mark? This is a weird oracle thing because like maybe doesn't help. If your result is maybe, then there is some other condition that needs to be fulfilled for the thing to happen or not happen as the case may be. Perhaps an appropriate ability check to overcome a relevant obstacle or achieve a stated goal. Or it could be that other yes, no, maybe question need to be asked in order to determine. Okay. What, oh, okay, so maybe the next question is, was this creature summoned on accident? Um, and I'm going to say that's unlikely, so negative two. So another d20, put it in a negative two. No, it wasn't summoned on accident. Therefore, they, know, they knew what they were doing. They knew what was going to happen. And so they summoned not only this creature or made not only this creature, but also summoned a magical, magical darkness to darken the town. And so I imagine, I love this idea that uh, Voss, Bloodthorn, and Girsa, who has no last name as far as I know yet, are at the gate this guard is sort of younger he's maybe bespectacled and nervous uh they're standing in front of this gate and there's these uh watchtowers and behind just behind the gate is this black wall that goes up as far as they can see and it's just this like magical night that's just like you can step into it and step out, and it's basically filling up the whole uh, city. And um, Voss Bloodthorn is, um, let's see, uh, Voss Bloodthorn. walks up to this young man even though she's short she grabs him but like sort of like by the collar but she's too short so she like grabs him by like whatever like thing is down below like sort of near his stomach uh and grabs his thing and looks up at him and she goes listen to me we need to get in there and this is this is important i need to get in there my companion is here on a mission so let us in, open the gates, whatever's in there. You don't, you, you'd rather have it get out of there, get out of the city, than be stuck out here with us. And she'll push him back and make a intimidation roll. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll say that can succeed, right? That can succeed, definitely. Um... I think uh, uh, Girsa is behind Voss, sort of like acting threatening, and uh, the the young man sort of is surprised he's not met uh, a halfling who is willing to like get up in his face. Um, so he, uh, yeah, seems a little taken aback. He falls sort of put you know when she pushes him he sort of stumbles backwards he trips on a rock and stumbles um i think uh he goes up to the gates um i'm curious here uh he yeah, I guess there'd still be people in the guard towers, like, just because this thing is in, in the loose uh, doesn't mean that it's, um, like, destroyed the whole city or that everybody's looking for it. Uh, it's just that like, the darkness is creating the uncertainty. So this young guard 
uh, shouts up at the tower, let him in, let him in. Uh, the, oh yeah, um, let's see, if I go to journals, oh she, this is, this is it. Who's the Sunset Regiment? There's like a, a really famous character in of this, Ow, ouch, sorry, Welly. Uh, I just poked my cat and he really freaked out. Hmm, let's see. Here we go. Dorita, come in your right fang. Hmm. with Alice Moat. All right, I knew, I knew, I knew it. So, um, uh, uh, I think Voss threatened this boy and this young man and said and told him that uh, Girsa was on a mission for Grand Marshal Lord Clerican. Clerican. And Oh, that's just where he tests them. Their tests their martial prowess, and the order attends to the diplomatic reshuffling of its captains. Uh, so maybe that's not who I was looking for. Maybe who I'm looking for is um, there's somebody in here who's like even more important. I think the Mac Petra is the headquarters. Oh, Provost Marshal Ul Ulricus Velato. Okay, that's what she's going to say. She's going to tell uh, this young man that Girsa is on a mi is there to complete a mission and to assist Provost Marshal Ulricus 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 Velato. Uh, and he'll stammer and stutter and then run over to uh, the gates and pound on them and shout up, let them in, let them in, they're here to see the provost marshal. Uh, and like there's some exchange of words, um, the danger, it, like the words of the danger are explained and then eventually the gates open and uh, I think once they do, the sounds of the city become much more obvious. There's, uh, it's very quiet. Like, it, they didn't really realize it. I think Voss and Gearsa didn't realize it at first, but it's like deathly quiet. Everyone's inside. There are torches and whatnot along uh, each road but and guards standing pretty much all over especially at the entrances um and sort of walking around with torches making sure that no this thing isn't um it's basically like martial law right and as they come in there's a, a collection of guards there and they uh, sort of hold up a hand and they go, that's, that's far enough. Uh, one of them says he's, uh, got, uh, a visor that's pulled up, but, um, plate mail on. He's got a sword at his hip and a torch in one hand. He holds up his other hand like this and he's got a slight sh stubble, uh, the hair, because he has a hood up to sort of obscure it before he put his um, helmet on, can't really tell, but his beard is uh, like a sandy blonde. He holds up his hand and says, what tasks bring you to Kornipisht? And Girsa raises herself up and she says, uh, 
Lord Provost Marshal. What's his name? Lord Provost Marshal. Nope, not that. Uh, Ulrichus Vallato sent for me years ago. No, months ago to assist you with some troubles that you were having from bad actors within your town. Uh, I think Provost, or uh, the man, this guard, he says, this guard of the uh, Undying Sun says, Oh, I, I imagine his trim is all this like super awesome golden. He has the the sun with the flower uh, on his chest, and he says, "And by what name do you go? And for what reason would he bring you here?" And Girsa says, "My name is Girsa." Girsa, uh, what's her last name? Something hand, like, my name is Girsa Firm Hand, and I have been in contact with Provost Marshal many years. He asked me here for a favor, for it was. <laughs> ah, I, this is cool. For he knows my skills are the ones of rare rarity. And uh, the guards look at her and she, she doesn't, she looks able, but not someone that would necessarily be contacted to do such work. Um, and or like s not contacted perhaps from like someone with uh, the provost marshal's um, acumen and, and status. And the man says, and why would do you think provost marshal, <laughs> I cannot remember this guy's name, Ulrikes Valato. Oh, oh no. She, she doesn't say Girsa. She just says, my name is Girsa, and I believe Ulrikes, uh, Provost Marshal Volato, would, could use my expertise. And they say, he says, why do you think she, he would ever need the expertise of someone like you? And she says, oh, I am quite known to him. He is a close friend of mine. Oh, voila. Oh my gosh, is that right? Volato or Volota or Volota? Voloto, Voloto, right? I think so. Valoto, Valoto, yeah. Uh, and she says, for he is my brother, and I have come, and I have come here to assist him in whatever means I may. Um, the man raises his eyebrow and she says, it seems as though this has gotten out of hand. You cannot dispel the darkness and I deal in dark deeds better than anyone. Voss is standing there, quiet, confused, suspicious now because she didn't know uh, Gears' true identity, and she's definitely given, uh, ow, Gears the side eye of like, okay, what else are you not telling me? Um, so, uh, how does he respond to this, I guess? Um, okay, uh, What does the monster do? General tactics, monster reaction table, 
monster encounter for solo NPC. Oh, that's what that, okay, that's not very long. Shopping. Hmm. I think it's more of a question of asking yes or no questions on this. So let's clarify this a little bit. Unique answer mechanic. Um, if I act completely crazy, will they go away? <laughs> That's funny. The likelihood of this is determined to be possible, and so that the player attempts... Okay. Um, do... I guess... Okay, so the, the guard uh, sends a runner to Velato, uh, Provost Marshal, and uh, while... Um, Ouch, Wellington. <laughs> Dude, my cat is, he's mad. He's so whiny and mean right now. Um, and sort of slimy. He's cleaning himself. Um, and while they wait for the runner to come back, um, Girsa Valato says, I must know what the, uh, the, situation is here. Can you inform me? Um, at least for our own protection, not anything confidential until you know my identity is verified. But once I am, then I will expect more details. Uh, what has happened here? Why is there darkness and what creature stalks your streets that, as we heard of outside? And, uh, the, the captain or the guard sort of shifts uneasily, but he's like, oh, well, it started about uh, a week ago. I, I don't, if you say you're Provost Marshal Velato sent for you months ago, it was before things had gotten as bad as they are now how he knew we would need help if indeed that is who you are I do not know but for there is a rebel faction here that we have been struggling with first they started as a small underground band trading uh, looting uh, dealing in forbidden artifacts of dark magic and the more we tried to curtail them the more vicious they became and uh, well they have amassed great power it is difficult to know who to trust and who not to you can excuse me for my um, surprise and my distrust of newcomers for if it is true that you are Provost Marshal Velato, Velato's sister then uh, your help will be most welcome but many have come and gone through in through our gates and not always for the r reasons we would like, and not always for the good reasons, and um, well reasons, but rather for mischief and illegal activities that is outlawed by the undying flame. He says, it started with the, first the confiscations of small trinkets, and then it became a bigger thing. We noticed many of the confiscated items, sometimes strange potions. They all had a, f a seal on them of a painted on with purple ink and a purple flame. We know not who ran it at first, but we started 
patrolling more in the slums and also down by the docks and along the river we started searching at random boats that might have been uh, coming in from upstream or downstream and uh, when we started doing that we we began to find what we had feared uh, many many dark items were coming into the city and our cities were becoming uh, our city was becoming more dangerous there was uh, a crime spree people being murdered taken their coin taken their homes ransacked and we knew we could not stand idly by so we cracked down hard this was sev some months ago that we raided many homes basements shops even merchants for we had intel that they were people of if not outrightly participating in the illegal activities then at least uh, profiting from them and not reporting them to the undying sun so when that happened all hell broke loose it has been war ever since um, we're gonna say like Maybe like something like this has been cut off from the rest of the city and there we go. He says the whole southern part of the city has been uh, overrun by well it's like everyone who oh actually <laughs> that's funny that oh whoops I just noticed that there's this part over here that actually would be like the perfect place for everyone to go but I like this I like this it makes it more immediate because they're like encroaching right um so, uh, we've pushed them back to the south part of the city but they have a stronghold uh, they have many strongholds and they have set up guards just as we have and we are at something of a standoff and then two weeks ago this happened and he motions to the sky um, and Voss will look at him and she goes, what about the, uh, what about the, the demon, the thing, the monster that's patrolling your, your town or harassing people? And the man says, ah, it is an aberration of some kind. Uh, I know not its name but it is foul to look upon. Uh, I guess I could have gone, <laughs> gone like this. I don't need to zoom in like that. I could just click on this. There we go. That's cool. Oh yeah, there we go. He goes, it is foul to look upon. Both beastly and made of smoke at the same time. Sometimes it looks as though it has horns and many fangs and claws but at other times it looks like it is nothing more than vapor it is hard to pin down and always it slides past our mittens now the issue has been that the uh, purple flame as we have started to call them due to their symbol 
are sending this thing to terrorize our people. And that is why you see very few people on the streets, for it is difficult to know when it will strike. If people have to leave their homes, we escort them wherever they may need to go. This serves two purposes. And Voss finishes it, makes it so that if they're bad actors, if they're a part of the purple flame, they're, you know where they're going to be. And if they're just normal people, then they're safe. The guard nods. He goes, yes. That is exactly why we do this. Um, Girsa starts getting up and she goes, All right, I've heard enough. It is time to put this monster, this thing, back to where it belonged. It seems that uh, my appearance here was just in time. Well, he stop. And the guard stands up. There's a couple other guards there, too. And finally, the runner comes back just on cue. And uh, he has a, a sealed... Uh, hey! He has a sealed... Uh, let's say a... Sealed envelope with a wax seal on it that... Excuse me. Bears the, the symbol of um, Provost Marshal Valato and the runner says he he said to give it directly to her and he points to Girsa and hands it to her um, and she reads it I don't know what it says it, she reads it quickly and then sm gives a little smirk and hands it to the to the guard. The guard looks at it, looks at the seal, and he looks at the runner and he goes, this came directly from Provost Marshal Velato's hand. And the runner says, it, it did, sir, it did. And uh, the man says, very well. Uh, he says, you may go. Ngirsa, uh, So, like nods to him and she says thank you for the information sir I, I, I won't forget it I will make sure my brother knows your service and your loyalty to the undying son the man says to the undying son he nods at Voss even though Voss is sort of taking this like a sort of a back seat all of a sudden she's definitely less of the main character um, she still has this quest I know the quest she is looking let's see here Her, her current quest, all right, chart log. Um, the the um, purple flame crime syndicate is pushing dark magic items in the city of Kronepisht. Um, they summoned magic, magic darkness over the town and unleashed uh, the umbral shambler. They have um, blocked off the south part of the city as their own. Um, Gears's brother is Provost Marshal Velato. Um, Voss's quest is to find the tiefling that hired hired Varric. No, Avic. Uh, I think. I think. This is one in the same quest. Like, this makes sense that the tiefling is somehow behind this, or at least involved in it in some way. Um, yeah. So, 
Here we go. What's next? Um, Voss tags along with Girsa. She says, "What did uh, what did that say?" And Girsa says, "He says he wants to us to meet him at the on the southwest slums in the southwest slums." He says, "I need to see something." So they begin to walk this direction. Uh, let's look at the urban encounters. Oh, interesting. Oh, I think that's what I did. I did to get the monster. Oh, maybe not. Huh. Oh yeah, this is the one I got marauding the streets and stuff like that. Okay, so no, no, no. Um, random dungeon, random wilderness, urban encounters, downtime roleplay. What do the monsters do? So I guess the question I would say is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah traveling huh I want to go here there we go modes of travel weather terrain types of settlement oh yeah terrain coastal solutions camping take oh tavern name generator Rumors, rumor location. Hmm, okay. So it doesn't really have like a percentage role. So, hmm. I guess I'm curious. It's like, how likely is this thing for them to encounter it while they're on their way? It just seems like a little unlikely. And so to just happen upon it right when you've arrived. So I'm gonna roll on unlikely. So it's a D20 minus two. Uh, and we're gonna just see what happens. <laughs> oh my gosh, every time, this is so crazy. Okay, this is, it's really interesting. As I'm learning how to do this, I'm definitely feeling like my expectations are constantly subverted with this, um, like the solo adventurer's toolbox. The likelihood mechanic is surprisingly varied. Go on, go. Ouch, I need to turn on the light. Um, like, I'm just really surprised that I roll, um, you know, an unlikely thing and then roll high enough where I end up, it very well ends up being a yes. So uh, in this situation, my characters, Voss and Girsa, uh, they walk through the town. I think there are there's a lot of guards out, but they're not um, particularly... Uh, I, okay, I think there's more questions that need to be asked here. Um, I don't think it'd be likely for this monster to attack in the open. I think it is more suited to doing things sneakily and stealthily. And so I'm going to say they do encounter it, but more of this is a question of how they encounter it. As they're walking through the streets, uh, some of the roads are dirt and turned to, and some of them are paved. But as they go, grow closer and closer, uh, the sounds uh, of people in their homes can be heard, murmurs behind doors, windows are shuttered, though the cr like faint glow of uh, candlelight or lamplight can be seen 
coming from within. Um, so my question for this monster is, does it attack them in the streets? And now there are guards periodically around, uh, and uh, guards of the Undying Sun. And so I'm going to say highly unlikely for it to attack them in the in the streets. I think that actually the more obvious question would be, does do they encounter it as it attacks like someone in a building, like sneaks into someone's building, avoiding detection, and tries to kill someone? And is that how they encounter it? And that, I'd say, is highly likely. That's how they encounter it. So I'm going to roll uh, d20 plus 4. Sixteen. So that's a yes. So that's how they encounter it. So as they um, go around this corner here, oh, this is interesting. I don't. Oh, I think this is like a paddock. I think they go, walk around this, and as they go around this corner, um, they hear a cry from a building, some like hysterical screaming, and. They both break into a run and shout for guards. Uh, do guards respond? Because that will change things a little bit. I'm going to say likely, so plus two. <laughs> no, they don't. OK, so it's just them. Um, or maybe like, yeah. So they run forward to this house, um, maybe with, I forgot what uh, Voss looks like. She's pretty cool looking, I, personally, I think, anyway. Um, oh. She runs forward the, uh, and barges maybe like the door is shut uh but it is maybe there's not like the most tight seal on one of the windows or something i don't know they wouldn't even notice that she just goes straight to the door so that i guess that's a moot point isn't it um she's gonna try to break in the door with just like by charging into it um, I'm going to say Voss, here we go, uh, actions. She's going to try to just strength this thing down. I guess that's a athletics check with strength. I wish there was like a might roll because this feels like a might. She's like charging forward. I'm going to say that she's going to get like a D4 extra just because she's taking a running start and like putting her head down. Well, that's not going to do it regardless. <laughs> she runs up and just like crashes into the door. And then she's just like pushing and pushing on it. Um, question. Is it locked? Highly likely. Plus four. Yeah. It is locked. <sighs> okay. Um, so the screams continue to come from it. Um, I think she slams into it and can't quite get it open. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, Girsa will come up to it and just be like, get out of the way. And she pulls out her war hammer and then just takes a huge swing and just smashes. Yeah, totally just smashes in the door with that two handed strike. Um, there are pieces of the, like the door 
pieces of wood just splinter off, just <laughs> splintering off in different directions. And, and the door flies inward inside. Uh, let's see, let's grab a commoner or two. Commoner. Yep. Oh, shoot. Uh, yep. Let's go like that. And then let's go like this. And boom. Boom. Uh, okay. And I guess at that point we need to roll initiative. So the only person that needs to roll initiative is Voss. 15. So Voss is first. Ooh, I like this. So like, uh, Gear says so like takes out her Warhammer and just <laughs> blasts this thing open. Voss is the first one just running in. Um, I think she would have drawn her hand axe and her shield. Yeah, that puts me up to 18 AC, which is good. And uh, is going to run in. She sees this. Is Are either of these um, and uh, commoners dead? I'm going to say likely. So plus two. Like maybe it's already killed one of them before they got there. Maybe. Okay, so not dead, hurt, injured, incapacitated, but not necessarily dead, but injured at the very least. Mortally injured if not given uh, aid soon. Um, this sort of, let's see here, what's this thing say? Um, umbral, umbral. Shambler. Let's see what it says about this thing, if anything. Oh, not, not much information about it. Okay, it's got immunity. It's vulnerabilities, radiant. Okay, void speech, common. Tenbris, the umbral shambler speed is doubled while in dim light. Jeez, or darkness. And it doesn't provoke opportunity attacks when it moves, provided it moves only in dim light or darkness. In addition, when a creature that relies on sight attacks the umbral shambler while the shambler is in dim light or darkness, the attacker has disadvantage on the attack roll. And there's magical darkness literally everywhere. Although, there are, there are lamps. So, void traveler. The umbral shambler doesn't require food. Claws, twisted the umbral shambler can project itself beyond reality for a short time until the start of the next turn. The shambler can move through objects. Oh, that's how it gets into places. As if they were difficult terrain, provided an object is no more than three feet thick, and at least one side of the object is in dim light or darkness. Oh, man. So by, by making this everything dark in here, they gave this thing like access into everyone's home and that's how it kills people and how it escapes. This is a great, a great encounter actually. Um, okay, so this one we're gonna just put uh, at one HP. Oh, whoops. There you go, so it's injured. Uh, the other woman is screaming this thing is uh, like crouching, not crouching, but like backing the other woman into a corner. Voss busts in and with her, um, how does smite work? Once per turn, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one divine spell slot to deal extra radiant damage to the target. 
when you hit. So you have to hit first. In addition to the weapon's normal damage, the extra damage is 2d, 2d8 for first circle spell slots plus 1d8 for each circle higher than first to a maximum of 5d8. Uh, the damage increases by 1d8 if the target is fiend or undead. I don't, but this thing isn't fiend. It's aberration. Ah, okay, but that's okay. It does have weakness, uh, right? Uh, vulnerabilities. How do vulnerabilities work again? Black flag, low plane, light creatures, vehicles, and like most items, poison and psychic damage, poison prone and unconscious. Okay, wait a second. It's not helpful. All right, she is going to take. A uh, yep, a, a swing with her axe, and we'll see <laughs> because she has dis disadvantage since it is. We are gonna say they're inside. I think if they're outside, maybe some of the lamplight would uh, brighten up the streets enough. So maybe if they can scare it out. But at the moment, it doesn't look good. So uh, that's going to be a hand axe attack. So I, okay, I got 16 on the first roll. And yeah, so I, I do, I actually hit it. All right, she is going to definitely expend a uh, spell slot for this. Divine favor heroism, okay. Um, and do a Define Smite. Where's the Smite? So that's an extra 2d8. So I do, uh, do the 1d, 1d6 first, which is 6 damage. And then I get to do the Smite damage, which is 2, it's 48. So that's 11 plus... Because it ha the reason it's 48 is because it has a weakness to radiant damage, uh, right? Damage, vulnerabilities, radiant. So another, another 7 and another 11. Oh my gosh, that was so dirty. It had 39 HP and I brought it down to 15. Uh, I imagine she hurdles forward with her axe and just as she's swinging down she looks up to it she thinks of her place in the world she thinks of uh thoth hermes the monks that raised her the th the type of thankfulness she has for being protected and of where this has led her her axe her hand axe flares with light as it slashes down through the shadow and smoke it seems to cleft through it doesn't tear or stop or get stuck on anything um it just simply passes through this thing uh and wisps of smoke pass off of it it shrieks <coughs> and spins around uh, as she positions her shield up uh, in order to defend, and that is its turn. Boom. Uh, this thing... <laughs> right. It's just going to go to the wall and it's going to use its umbral step or twisted step. Uh, it can pass through the walls. 
provided an object is no more than three feet, otherwise it takes damage. But it can just pass through the wall, uh, it's going to use that, and then it can double its movement speed, and its movement speed is 20 feet, so it can go 40, and it just goes straight out the door, and then another, you know, like, it uses maybe 10 feet to get out the, out, outside the walls where they can't see it and then at that point it goes somewhere it could go through another wall it could go right like okay so just like conceptually if they're in this building here they go in the front door here it could just pop out this door and this wall and then just go through this wall and then through this wall and through that wall like right so it just sneaks out and this is why it's been so hard to find and so hard to capture is because right when it's attacked it is able to flee very easily and it's gone that was not a very exciting adventure or uh, combat it was one hit but i mean that is how combat typically is in real life. This is, you know, a little more lethal perhaps, but uh, definitely works pretty well. So, um, yeah, that was crazy. That was so much damage for a level two character. Um, Voss swings at it. It's, it screams and twists and then jumps through the wall and is gone. Uh, I think Girsa runs out the other way to try to figure out where it's gone, um, but it is too late. It's already gone. Um, the woman, this woman who isn't injured, will uh, kneel over her friend, weeping. Uh, Voss steps up to her uh, and says, "Shh, shush, it's okay, it's okay." Is she all right? And I'm going to ask again, uh, is she dead? I'm going to say possible. So it's a 50-50 roll. Let's find out. Yeah, she's dead. Um, it just like, it wasn't immediately apparent that she was, but now that... Uh, Voss can really take take in the take in her her uh, appearance. It's it's very clear that this thing has killed her. The other woman is weeping, and Voss says, "I'm I'm sorry that we couldn't save her. I this is mad. I I know what it's like to lose someone." And this woman's like just distraught. Uh, mm, after examining the body, uh, Girsa comes back in with some guards, and she says, "The thing." Oh my gosh! You. Uh, the guards look around. They they go to the the living woman. They comfort her. They ask who this other person was. Um, they ask Voss what happened and Voss recounts how Girsa opened the door and she <laughs> she just smite, like you know attacked this thing but it fled um, and they they're like okay uh, gosh, this is you know this is the constant here even it's like this 24 hours. No one knows where it will strike next or who it will attack. Um, Girsa says, come on. Uh, it's, we really should get going. We, we need to meet my brother. He's probably waiting for us. And so they continue to head down this direction, even though, and once they get near the... Uh, near the uh the border of like the rebel zone there is i imagine like 
lots of crates and boxes have been arrayed wherever there's like places where people could usually walk freely there's almost like makeshift checkpoints and there's like a bit of a no man's land maybe i'll uh i'll do uh let's do this dark green so like this is the no man's land oh man that didn't work yeah that's fine that goes like this And it's sort of like the space that uh, you can, you don't go, but there's like basically a standoff on either side of these. Um, and there is a man in a flowing golden cape with uh, dark black trim all around it. It's like the darkness is getting beaten back to the edges of his cape. He wears silver armor. He has a radiant sword on his back. And um, wears no helm. He, <laughs> he looks, uh, he has dark hair and dark eyes. The same, oh wait, let's see. Is she, is she has light eyes. Uh, dark hair and light eyes, just like his sister, uh, and they are twins, like identical twins, obviously different um, gender identities, but they are twins in all, he has shorter hair than her, but that's really the only difference. He has maybe slightly thicker arms and shoulders, maybe a little taller, but they are cut from the same cloth in so many ways. Um, and as she strides up, Girsa says, Hoi, brother, it is finally nice to see you again. It has been many years. And uh, Provost Marshal uh, Valato turns around and he sees his sister and his face cracks into a smile and he says, Ah. Oh, Sister, well met. I'm glad for your help. And that's where we're going to end our session. Sick. That was a pretty. That was pretty good. I like that. That was pretty fun. Um, I think I was a bit better at the flow of this one. I think it took a little bit to get into, but I'm also getting the hang of it. And I know that maybe there's times where I'm like unsure of how to go proceed next. And that can be a little dull, but uh, I appreciate you checking it out and watching. Um, I'm having a really good time learning how this works. And I think it's actually working a lot better than I thought. I think there's, there's times where I just need to make decisions. I think if you watched my streams of The One Ring, that game is so procedural that there's no question of what I need to do next, typically. Well, this game is, D&D &D is not procedural, like, at all. There's very few procedures other than, like, okay, roll initiative. Okay, now go through the order of fighting, right? Um, otherwise, it's very freeform. And that's not the case with the One Ring, which makes it easier to play as a solo RPG, right? This is so freeform that it, it makes it, it feels a little more difficult. Uh, because so much is left to me to just decide this is what I do or this is what's happening rather than let's roll for it. Boom. Okay, I have these prompts. Now I can do it. That's the one thing that I wish was included in here was an inspiration table um, that was akin to the verb list but maybe a little not just verbs not just action words, right? Maybe like one with adjectives, one with verbs, one with nouns, things like that. So I'm like, oh, what is it? And then I could roll on those things, right? To, to make that make sense. And the one wearing does that, this doesn't, but that's okay. Like I think working with constraints is actually the most interesting thing 
to do here. So, um, and it creates creativity. Constraints, ironically, things that constrain you end up create, making, forcing you to create things that you wouldn't have otherwise. And that's fun. So experience-wise, let's answer the questions. Did you play a session? Yes, that's 50 XP. Did you meet a new NPC? I mean, I did, but they're like so minor that I don't really think they count. I think I did, we didn't quite meet uh, Provost Marshal Velato yet, so I'm not gonna count him. Did you get a new quest? No. Did you go on a journey? No. Did you discover a new place? No. Did you invoke a fa ideal or bond? I forgot to do that. I don't even think I have a fa, uh, I fa or ideal or bond yet. Did you finish a minor quest? No. Did you finish a major quest? No. Did you make a new ally? Did you make a new enemy? Uh, definitely made a new enemy. I think probably made a new enemy and a new ally, tell you the truth. Because... Yeah. Okay, so 250, we're going to say. Plus, oh no. Uh, 250. There we go. Sweet. So next next level, I'll probably grow a level. Um, next session, I mean. All right. And the, I, every single time I attack, I deal a ton of damage. It's sort of crazy. I'm curious about Define Smite. Um, once per turn when you hit a creature with a weapon attack. Oh, that could be a bow. That's nice. It doesn't need to be melee. I've never seen a bow-wielding paladin before, but I just thought that'd be a really cool idea. But she's also pretty good hand to hand because of her stats are pretty high all the way across the board. So, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Um, if you want to check out Shard Tabletop, it's in the description. If you want to check out my website, it's in the description. If you want to play. If you want to play Dungeons & Dragons in my weekly campaign with this system, uh, with Tales of the Valiant, which will also be in the <laughs> description below, uh, if, you, if you want to play Tales of the Valiant uh, with me and uh, some other folks, I have one spot open for my game on Start Playing. Um, what else? You can follow me on threads. Uh, I'm just Nora's the DM. You can follow me on coffee. You can follow me here. Yeah, I guess that's it. Until next time, adventures. Uh, light the torch and delve into the dark. See ya.